Today we're going through the process of building a beautiful two post pergola overhead to your outdoor kitchen. Because there are only two posts, we need to beef up the supporting structure so the pergola is rock solid. We'll look at that a little later. Right now, let's jump right into the fun part, crafting the decorative rafters. First, we need to make the routing template out of MDF. The paper designer printed off a picture on the web that I like the proportions of. The design is rough cut with a jigsaw, and then I use a spindle sander to shape it to the layout lines. Use a file to get into the square corners. Use a template to mark lines on the rafter, and a jigsaw to cut the waist within a quarter inch or so of the line. Line up and clamp the template securely to the rafter, the clamps need to be out of the way of the router base. I used a large straight pattern bit to route the final shape. Finally, break the edges with an eighth or 3 16 roundover bit. A quick and easy way to make the purlons is to use a thin kerf blade in your circular saw with an edge guide to rip down cedar deck boards. Clean these up by rounding over all of the corners with your trim router. Okay, now we've taken the time to lay these out, picking the good ends from the bad ends, the good color, and kind of Started on this end. You know, these are the nicest edges, the most uniform color. I bundled the rafters and clamped them together. Then I used a track saw and a router to cut grooves for the lapping the rafters over the beams for extra strength and stability. We're getting set up to do the staining on the rafters and the purlons. The steps we're going through right now are just getting all the dust off. I got a finished route and have to round it over edges. So that's what I'm doing right now. We're gonna start staining now. A couple of things we're gonna use, just some uh, pan liners to make sure the cleanup is easy. Big old four inch brush. We've got a small two inch chip brush for getting up with some cracks. We've got a deck pad for trying to get some more volume on. And one of these really cool mini roller things. Uh, the stain we're gonna use is Super Deck by Sherwin Williams. And it is actually a cedar tone. Another trick I learned from when people are painting and don't wanna drip around. Uh, throw your can in a box and keep the drip contained. Now I shook it just a little bit earlier by hand, but when you get down to stirring the stuff, especially if it's set for a second, make sure you're down there scraping off the bottom. You don't get all the pigment off the bottom. Some some stains, you end up staining and they end up a lot lighter than the stuff they get in So get in there really good and then just kind of stir it in. Okay. I'm using one of these little rollers here. I think it's a little small for what we're doing here, so I'll end up getting the pad out. What you want to do is just roll it in good. It's a nice, thick, wet coat. You just don't want it to dry with the blotches. So come in after that, kind of smooth them out, keep a wet edge. And I'm trying not to get too much just dripping down the sides. Okay, so I got one done. It's probably going back and forth, making sure there's not finger marks and drips. But, uh, Run away. Oh, well, that's where it is already. So let this stuff dry overnight. Hopefully we have a good day tomorrow. And rock them up. The next step we need to do is get some holes in here so we'll be able to bolt on our posts. So what we're gonna do is make sure that the uh, holes don't line up on either side so we can stick the bolts through because we're fine. Um, for this side, I think we're gonna pick six and 16 inches. We take our uh, trusty center punch, trusty bulky nailer, come in here about six inches, and this will be the set of where the hole will drill. And then the second one up here at 16 inches. And really, as long as you're kind of within this web, in this situation, left to right doesn't really matter. As we're going off the back side, I think we want to have it spread out a little bit further because that's where the most of the torque is going to be on the uh, posts. So we'll come in here, maybe at, uh, say, 4 inches, maybe at like 18 inches. Our trusty Milwaukee and a couple of bits. And for drilling steel, if you're using a larger bit, you gotta make sure that you drill a pilot hole that's at least as big as the uh, foot point on the drill bit. You're gonna use a larger hole. Typically, when drilling into a metal 
if we use a coolant of some sort, we're going to see how fast this goes through, whether we need it or not. So that one looks kind of like butter. One last thing to always remember is, especially working with steel, my power tools always had your safety glasses on. Now we're going to slow it down from uh, the high speed to low speed for the larger bit. This one may, may not go through quite as fast. Give the consistent pressure pushing on this. Might as well use your legs. So you can see, I know a lot of you probably have kind of like drilling in steel, but especially the center stuff. Uh, really not to it. A little high speed steel bit. A little thicker than this or warmer outside or whatnot. End up throwing spraying some water or some uh, cutting oil on it, cool it, and then just right through there. Now before we start working on the uh, cabin tree, a little housekeeping. I'm going to pick up all these uh, metal chips. We don't want these to be rusting around or, you know, down where some of the bare feet later on might be uh, out here by the patio. I don't want them stepping on that. Okay, now we figured out that's down. It's about where the countertop is going to be. This is where a switch will be. I'm going to route a groove for the uh, electrical all the way through. This is approximately where the cross beams are going to be and the uh, rafters will come across like yay, so this will be hidden by a rafter up on the top side. There's the first pass. Okay, starting out today, we got all the uh, posts in here. Spent a lot of time getting them plumb. Got some shims in there just to make sure everything is on the straight and narrow. We got them lined up from end to end as well. You can see the groove we have routed in here to take the wiring. We have it the uh, depth so that we don't need a metal covering out the outside of it. We got the area will have recess a uh, outlet switch here. You can see up close the torque washers that we used on the uh, carriage bolts. Going to the top of the pole. I use a simple template to route the notches for the cross beams. Here's what it looks like after the routing. Today's the day. Start putting all these back up on top here. Our first order of business is to get that wire into that conduit space and get the cover on that so it'll be in place when we put the uh, beam across the top. Okay, so we got the first beam up there, just held in place by a screw. Get the other beam up there, clamp them together, and uh, drill a big through bolt. Now we got the second beam up there in place, held on by that top clamp. The next step is to uh, drill some Mongo long holes for the bolts to go through and hold everything together. These are the uh, bolts we painted earlier, just so they have a nicer finish on them for the show. Putting a 
torque washer on right now just to give a larger uh, surface area for the head. We'll end up cutting these off, painting them black. These are the lengths they had at the big box store we had available today. Okay, what we're gonna end up using, putting the rafters across the top, are two of these headlock bolts. We're putting the purlons across the top of that, we'll end up using some uh, stainless steel screws. These headlocks are just pretty much monster screws, or replaced lag bolts, much cleaner. We'll end up doing a pilot hole with these because we want to make sure we go through and hit everything properly. Um, they actually do not typically need a pilot hole. You just have this nice, star head fit brings everything down so here's one of the rafters we're going to be putting up as you can see we cut in those notches so it'll fit over those beams we screwed up there but what we're going to do now make sure those headlocks go through safely and straight we're going to take a extended reach bit a drill press just so it all is coming down square and plumb the diameter of the headlock bolts are about 3 sixteenths of an inch and the threads are another quarter inch diameter. So I ended up getting a 3 sixteenths inch bit so make clearance for the, uh, the barrel of the headlock bolts. I'm going to make sure this thing runs straight down so we got it running full speed and it uh, squeals a little bit so put your earplugs on. Now just to make life a little bit better, we'll throw these headlock screws in, at least in the pilot side here, so that I don't have to deal with that up on the ladder. There we go, first one's up. Snap chalk lines to start the layout and installation of the cross purlons. Pre-drill a pilot and countersink to avoid splitting the thinner purlon stock. There it is, all done with uh, two screws left. This is my box. These are my two screws. There is the completed pergola. I've had a lot of fun on this project and the pergola turned out great. Click into some of my videos for other projects that have been a part of building this beautiful outdoor kitchen.